Hey, I'm Kenneth Wajda. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my photo chats, all things photography. So today I'm going to talk about the cost of film. Somebody had a really interesting article saying that percentages, when you read a thing that says Kodak is going to raise the price of their film by 15%, that sounds like, oh my God, I can never afford to shoot film again. But when you find out that it means that they're going to raise the cost of a $10 roll of film to eleven fifty, can you afford an extra buck fifty? Sometimes the math is in the way. And I'll put a link to that article. I really thought it was fascinating. But the idea is, according to that article, the average film enthusiast who's shooting film these days is shooting about 20 rolls of film a year. So just about one every two, two and a half weeks. Not quite one a week. If that price of film goes up by $1.50, that means over the course of 20 rolls, they're going to spend an extra $30. Are you really going to quit film photography for 30 bucks? That's the issue with numbers and how it feels like, oh my God, it's way out of control. We cannot afford to make film photography. People say to me all the time, how do you afford it? How do I afford it? I bought a, many bricks of film, packs of 20, Elford HP5 years ago for $5 a roll, and I still have a bunch of it in my refrigerator. If I shoot one a week, it's five bucks. And I process it at home for pennies with HC110 and Fixer. Where's the big cost? How much could it possibly cost me? If I shoot a roll a week, and it's $5 a roll, that's 50 weeks, that's $250. Factor in some film chemicals, and let's say we're at $300 a year. How much did that new Z9 Nikon just cost you? How about that bag full of lenses you're carrying? Because I'm just carrying one M3 and a 50 millimeter. I'm just carrying one Nikon rangefinder or one Nikon SLR. My cameras have long ago been bought and they're not costing me anything. Now you could say, well, same thing for me. I didn't buy anything new. I just happen to have all this digital gear. But people who are shooting digital are dropping thousands of dollars into cameras, software, hardware, storage, software license fees. There's a lot of cost to shooting digital photography. I want to say, how can you afford that? Because to me, film photography isn't expensive at all. I ended up years ago buying, maybe three years ago, I ended up buying three boxes of 100 sheets of Kodak X-ray film. I thought it said 8x10. There was 100 sheets in each box. And I went into the dark tent and I went to load an 8x10 holder and it wouldn't fit. So I stopped trying and I looked and I saw the box set at 8 half by 11 so I had bought the wrong size. I had three boxes, 300 sheets. What am I going to do with it? Well, I recently picked up a 5x7 camera. And the beauty of x-ray film is it's light sensitive to blue and green, but not to red. So in my dark room, I could put a safe light on and I can cut it to 5x7 and see what I'm doing. I can even load the film holders and see what I'm doing. And those 300 sheets of film cut to five by seven will give me 600 photographs. I can make 600 photographs and I process them myself in HC 110 and Fixer for pennies. Seems to me I can shoot an awful lot of black and white HC, a lot of black and white x-ray photographs in a five by seven camera for very little money. I think I paid maybe $150 for the three boxes of film. And there are ways to save money. And there's also a reason to go buy new film. If you want to do a slideshow like I've talked about, buy some E100. We need to support Kodak. If you want to make color prints, get some Kodak Portra. It's a beautiful film. And it's important that we buy new stock too, not just use expired film. Otherwise, the film companies won't support us. 
And film isn't going to go away. People say, oh, it's going to, they're going to stop making it. No, it won't. There is always going to be some amount of film being made. Probably it'll at times limit in different stocks, but then some boutique companies like, like Burger or Fer Ferrania will come along and they'll make other film. There will always be film. They're still making film cameras. Leica is still making a, a M camera for film. Film isn't going away. And even if some of the big majors were to get out of the game, there's going to be small companies coming up and making film. And no matter what, we can always make our own film. Before there were places like Kodak and Fuji, people made film. They coated their own dry plates. They made wet plate photography. Photography won't stop being made in an analog way because Kodak or Fuji stops. Because there has always been the ability to make film and Kodak just made a, a easy way to go buy it over the counter. And there will always be boutique companies making some. That's my belief. So I'm not worried about the cost of film going up a little bit. And if it goes up a couple bucks a roll, right now there's a lot of supply shortages right now. There's a lot of transportation shortages right now. There's a lot of problems getting things moving around with COVID. So things might be a little bit more expensive, but they're more expensive for everything. Why is film any different? And why should film be right away, you know, abandoned because the price is going up some? We have to support Kodak. We have to support Fuji and all the smaller film companies. Ilford makes wonderful black and white film. It mostly all I shoot is HP5. That's my go-to. And making that kind of a film for us, that is something that they're giving us. That is a gift. But we have to support them. So buy up some HP5. Buy the films that matter to you. Store them and use them. And shoot a lot. Make work. That's the point of film photography, I think, is to make work. The things that you're making today, you can't say, well, what's that going to matter? Why, do I, why am I making that? You know what? It may not matter right now, but it will matter in time. That backyard barbecue that you cannot travel back in time 10 years to go see means more in 10 years than it might tomorrow. There are a lot of things that you can photograph, whether it's your downtown, which is forever changing, but it doesn't look that different right now. If you document things like that, those things will become valuable. But we have to make the work now. We can talk about, eh, I want to do something incredible. What, what is incredible? You know what's incredible? Is documenting the small moments that are in front of us and making work that, that will turn into that documentary that becomes the thing that we look to and want to look back on how things were, whether it's our own world, our families, our friends, whether it's street photos, whether it's documentary of local towns that we live in, all of that is what matters. And I say shooting it on film, frankly, if you did a documentary project on the businesses and buildings in your town and you shot it with a digital camera, it might not have nearly the cachet or interest to a gallery or a museum as if you shot it on a 5x7 or a 4x5 camera and setting up perfectly straight verticals and not having things tilted because of convergence, having all that control, that's the artisan working. And that's rewarded. They want work that feels like it came from an artisan, not from, oh, anybody could just point their phone out the window and shoot that. Make great art. Don't be afraid that film is going to go away. It's not going to go away because we're not going away. And it's important to support the guys that are making the film. Support Kodaks, Fuji, Ilford, Ferrania, Berger, all of them. And we'll keep making film photographs. All right, that's today's photography talk. If you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button. If you can support, hit the Patreon. I welcome your comments. I always enjoy reading those. And I will be back next time. We'll talk more photography. As always, here's the good light.